the audio. Yeah. That's all good. Now go to Facebook. Yeah, we push recorded already. Bam. We're walking down that side. Become the fun part. It's fun turned off? Yeah. Alright. I need headphones? Yeah, they coming. Alright. Go live. We are on time at night. Where the title go? You still DJing? When I feel like it, man. <laughs> you know, I shipped my club down earlier this year. Uh huh. And, uh, and uh, I uh, still do the townhouse from time to time. I go over there and hang out. I'm doing that again on the 7th. So I just go over there and fill in, which I like a lot better. I was doing it every Wednesday. But it felt like being in, on in the club again. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, uh. We lied. Oh, we about to go live. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can't even work with DJ turntables anymore. I'm nervous. Come on, man. It ain't that bad. I, I just do what I do, man. I never did. I never. I never was a scratching, scratching DJ. I've always been more of a uh, radio style. I play, play straight, just was all about the program. It wasn't about nothing else for me, but program. I was about mixing. I didn't really did scratching too much. I was. That's my thing. Mixing. I never did scratching. All right, folks. We are live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast hip hop. We are sitting back here in Zotown Studios. Another episode of. New Music Wednesday. I, mean, I keep doing that shit. New Music Tuesday, y'all. The New Music Webinar every Tuesday from 7 to 9 right here from Zotown Studios. And as we complete our setup for the day, I say I got people joining the show already. I got artists been chiming in. I got, we full of the day. We don't have, we, we, we no need to solicit any more tracks for the day show. We are absolutely full. And uh, I thank everybody for the show is growing, folks. The show is growing. People are calling me all throughout, throughout the week to send us tracks and uh, send us new music and to have this stuff heard by me and my professional homies. Today, my guest is a brother. Oh, man. You might not know his face. You know his name. He's almost like, I ain't going to say in a bad way, but he's like Jerry Heller. Everybody knows his name, but nobody really knows his, <laughs> who he is. You know what I'm saying? When you mentioned this name, oh yeah, I know him. He's lying. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, my guest is my boy from back in the day, Mr. Greedy Greg. What's up, Greg? What's up, Zo? What's up? Hanging out, man. We just do what we do right here today, man. We back in the studio. We took the studio and broke it up into three, three different sections. And this section right here, we do a live podcast every week, man, on Tuesdays from seven to nine. And I invite all everybody, all the aunties and uncles. We got, you know, we got A and R uncles and A and R aunties now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my nephew can rap. My 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 baby can rap. Okay, well fine. Let's see what he got. Okay, don't don't wait on my opinion. Okay, that's why I, I take it to to the audience, to Facebook Live, and let them see what they what we working with. So if, don't wait on my personal personal opinion because I might not feel it from a personal standpoint, but it might be it. So. We got a lot of stuff. We got quite a few songs today, but before we start that right there, man, tell me what you got going on these days. Uh, these days, I'm working on a couple of movies. I'm okay. On a biopic with DJ Quick, and then I'm working on a country and western Christmas movie. Oh shit! You say country and western Christmas music? Movie, movie, movie. Yeah, movie. Country and western Christmas movie. Exactly. What's it called? Uh, right now, it's called Noel Leon. It's based on this country and western song. No shit. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to expand my, my game. Hey man, get your money down. That's it. Get your money. When you go to the bank, they'll never tell you, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Greedy Greg, we can't accept this check. It's not from hip hop. We, <laughs> we, we only accept hip hop checks from you. We uh, cannot take, take a country and western check from you. That's some bullshit. Right, right, right. I, I just can't wait to do it. When, so when you started production? Uh, Third week, of, I mean, last week of January, we start country and western. Now, I don't, I guess, quick ain't doing the production on this right here. No, no. Okay. Now, for those who don't know, 
I'll let him let him tell you. Okay, tell the tell our audience who you have been, the the man behind the producer and the person that made it happen. Uh, start off with Tone Lope. Okay. DJ Quick. Okay. Second to none. AMG. Domino Monk and Steph. OFTB. Who else? Uh, BG Knockout and Dreister. That does the boy have credentials or what? Does the brother have credentials? Okay, so that's why he's on my show today. Because he got credentials, he got real credentials, he got an ear, he got an eye for talent. I mean, we saw him on Quick, Tone Low, uh, Second and None, all these folks are from Compton. Now, I don't, know how, I don't know how I miss these brothers. I swear to God, I know how I miss them, okay? I, that was the, I guess that was third, second generation. Second generation. Second generation. I was too busy working on the first one still. And I was chasing you, chasing you when you was wrecking crew, man. What? I was like, Lazo, Lazo! <laughs> Did get your attention? Bullshit! No, no, no. I wasn't Hollywood, I know. No, I just didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to figure, <laughs> trying to figure it out. All right, folks, uh, we got a few songs today. I, I got one song, I, I got a couple of songs that I got to play um, that came from, from, from uh, some interesting people, but I'm not going to play them just yet because one of them, I don't even want to come up because I'm, I'm going to come off prejudice no matter what I say. All right? So um, before I. Um, before I, uh, yeah, my first song tonight, first song tonight, we got a bunch of songs. We got songs from all type of genres today. We got a couple of jazz songs. We got a, uh, some gangster stuff. We got some of everything. The first track we got, I got this track. This is the last track I got this evening. Brother sent this to me. It's called Gravity. And uh, here we go. All right, that is Gravity. That's Gravity. Uh, I forgot the artist's name. He didn't. Know, it's not on this track. You gotta give me your name on the track. There's no name is. It's, if it ain't DJ Unknown, I it, it's unknown track. Okay. Um, that's Gravity, man. Uh, what we got for Gravity record? What we, I'm, I'm gonna get your opinion last. Okay. okay. Uh, sounds far away. I know why. Uh, what's up, fellas? My girl Sean, they just play it. I need my producer, Kyrie. Make your hands. Um, we just, I just realized we got a little issue here. We got to correct right quick. Um, but yeah, um, what do you think about that, Greg? Uh, I need some work. Need okay. Some work. Okay. Yeah, and be honest with it, man. It, 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 it didn't jump out at me. The track is just a basic track and. The lyrics was eh, so so. Didn't really, wasn't really saying nothing. Okay, I ain't mad that you died. I mean, that's what we're here for, you know. Um, everybody is. Everybody would like to be in the record business, but everybody's not ready to be in the record business. And sometimes we have to, uh, we have to let them know. And, and we ain't got to be. We ain't trying to be cruel. No. We just trying to be real. Uh, one okay. thing. I, one thing. I, I over the years, I don't. I don't do anymore. I don't. Kill someone else's dream. Right. I just give my, 
Okay. <laughs> you give him a verbal hug, huh? Yeah, I give him a verbal hug. I used to, I used to, I, you know, I didn't like it. I would kill your dream. You know, I, I, I hate they coming in now. My girl Sean say pass, and she also says he's got nothing. He's he, he got nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, my folks, they they don't they like most time they fresh out of fucks. Okay. <laughs> they fresh out of fucks, <laughs> and uh, you know when they when they get fresh out of fucks, I, 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 I hate. All I can do is relay the message to the artist and let them know how my people feel. And that's why we do what we do the way we do it. That way you can't be looking for my ass uh, after the show. <laughs> now That's all you can do. That's all we can do, okay? Uh, let me see here. I got a few songs that came in on YouTube. I'd rather people send them to me on uh, MP3, but you know, we, technology allows us still to make that happen. So I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel, my, uh, my boy here, he, now he got Dub74. He has a, a few tracks here. I'm going to play this one right here first. Dub74, y'all. Pull up. Hold on, hold on, folks. Let me fix something right quick. We got a little technical difficulty here. Uh, one, this shouldn't be coming in like that. Two, uh, I want to make sure we get the proper sound on this thing here. So let me uh, make an adjustment here and get in the mix of properly. Get a good solid connection. Let's try that again, folks. And that's the wrong song. Let me go back here. Sometimes having all this technology can be more of a curse than a blessing, but you know, it eventually works itself out. And that's what we're gonna do right now. See you where you at, nigga. Pull up with a Mac. You gon' hear that bitch rap, nigga. I'ma pull up, nigga. Down you on sight, nigga. Put that shit on Christ, nigga. I'ma take your life, nigga. I'ma pull up, nigga. See you where you at, nigga. Pull up with a Mac. You gon' hear that bitch rap, nigga. I'ma pull up, nigga. Down you on sight, nigga. Put that shit on Christ, nigga. I'ma take your life, nigga. I'ma pull up at your house where it ain't, nigga. I'ma act a circus, paint your motherfucking face, nigga. Should've killed me when you shot me. Crack rock coming back, whipping back you up, cause your shit chops. Nigga, cut that bitch with no blood. The Glock board a nigga head with no fade. The strap hit a nigga deep with no pace. The K beat a nigga face like an 808 slide. What you talking, but you never did a fucking thing. Used to be a stand up nigga, now you fucking lame. The punk hit a rap star, now you fucking sing. I don't wear a fucking mask, so your ass know it's me. I'ma pull up nigga, see you where you at, nigga. Pull up with a Mac, you gon' hear that bitch rap, nigga. I'ma pull up nigga, down you on sight, nigga. Put that shit on ice, nigga. I'ma take your life, nigga. I'ma pull up nigga, see you where you at, nigga. with that greedy great. Uh, 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 I think it's cool. Uh, the lyrics, uh, I don't know about the lyrics. You know, and I, come on, man. Come on, help me out. Cause they gonna hit, they gonna hate on me because I'm telling you, we got to stop tuning all this killer shit. This, this killer music shit, man. I mean, the, the boy got skills. The boy, he, he can flow. But he, I, I just got a problem with brothers still killing brothers on wax. It, it's what I call block music. It only gonna play on your block. Okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good term, man. You know? Good term, good term. Yeah. Block music. I mean, it's good for what the homies gonna love you for. They're gonna right. bump it in their cars and y'all smoking on the corner. 
but I, I'm trying to get off the block. I don't know. <laughs> you got to embrace the world, man. Um, you got to embrace. You can't just you can't hang on the hood. The boy got skills. I just think he need to redirect his lyrics that could be more uh, universal, man. I mean, right. for me to uh, kind of who have witnessed uh, Biggie, Tupac, now um, uh, Nipsey Hussle, all these brothers getting shot. I right. know this is. I know in some cases it may sound far fetched, but some cases it's right on. It's at, at home, and you don't want that. Okay. Every time, like I said before the show started, every time there's a brother that falls, we go, oh, we have to stop all the violence on the records until you get to the studio. Right, right. So, so the nigga make a hit on killing another brother, that goes back and goes right back to the same thing again. My, my problem with the record is, where do I sell it? How, who's gonna- Who gonna buy it? Who's gonna buy it? Who, who gonna market it, right? How do you market it besides on the block? Right. Now, Spotify, of course, if you put it on Spotify, they're going to put it with some more killer nigga records. <laughs> you know, and you, you know, there, there, there is a small market for killer nigga records. Okay. But, but you make those type of records, you can't make no money besides Spotify because nobody's going to book you to perform it. Right. Because it's going to bring violence towards the club. Right. And think, come on, man. People don't, these brothers don't understand it's a twofold situation. If you want to get your money, it's one thing to have a record out. Right. But where are you going to perform at? But what I know is a lot of artists, they are content. Just being on YouTube and, and Spotify, you don't have a record on YouTube and yeah. iTunes. It's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You yeah. gotta think bigger than that. Come on, man. That's why. That's why I called you, Doc. I needed some help on this one right here. Oh, I, I, come on. Uh, we need to hear some rap, uh, rap therapy and fun. I ain't mad at you, Doc. Um, it won't go worldwide. You, we already agreed on that one. <laughs> We need rap uh, with life, not death. Okay, fellas, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, they need to get um, out the same box. Yeah, and, and I tell them all the time, and I've had debates on this show with other producers. Oh, man, that's what's, that's what's hot. It ain't never hot killing other brothers, man. It may sell, but it ain't hot, okay? And we have to understand at some point in time, all money ain't good money for us, okay? If that, that, if the clan was paying brothers to kill brothers, would you take that job? Come on, man, let's be real. You know, if if, if they said, hey man, he goes some he goes some money, some guns and some bullets, I need you guys to kill some brothers tonight. I got a meal, I got a meal ticket for you. Ah, I pass on that one. Okay. But they still do it though. Right. In their own way. Okay. Exactly. You promote that lifestyle and you might as well go out there and take your take a take a take some kick a check, get a gun, and put some work in. Okay. It's the same effect. Exactly. So you got two old school players here tonight, y'all. Uh, what up, Tony A? I see Tony A. I see my boy Thomas Woods on the line. Daryl Straight. What's up, Daryl? Um, Sean Q. She's a regular. Much love to you, baby. Um, the, the show is constantly going. I'm looking at it. It's getting bigger by the minute here, folks. So we're going to try something a little different here. Last week, I had a, a special guest. My boy, uh, Kevin, um, Kevin Nelson was with me. Uh -huh. And Kevin brought one of his artists down. This brother's name was called Kill Hollywood. Okay. And he, his whole mantra was about uh, killing the Hollywood vibe. Because, you know, Hollywood can, you know, that's why I said, I hope I didn't go Hollywood on you. I, I tried <laughs> to go Hollywood. And I, I hate that. Oh, I'm going to get with you. I'm going to get with you. Come on, we're going to do lunch. We get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Okay. Right. We're going to do, we're going to hang out there. When I called you, you said, hey, man, I, I said, Greg, I can't do it this week. I got somebody else. Can you come in? I'm coming. You here at seven o'clock like it, like you're supposed to, because that's what real dudes do. Right. Okay. If you call me, I'm coming. Okay. So I hate the Hollywood vibe. I hate the Hollywood, you know, pretentiousness. And this dude, I guess he must experience in his career as well, because he has a couple of songs about that, that same situation. He, that's his name. I'm sorry. That's his name. Kill Hollywood. Okay. Hollywood can be rough. Hollywood can be rough. It can be. It can be very rough. I see my boy Derek Smoking. Yes, thank you, man. For I'm doing. I'm doing some good things. I'm doing my best, man. You know how we do it. Um, but this song right here is more of a little bit of a love song. So I'm gonna drop this on you as well. And you know, we don't do a lot of love songs on this thing. We're gonna drop one today. Kisses on love, 
All right, y'all, that was Kisses of Love by my boy Keo Hollywood. Can I get some feedback? What we got? What we got? I see hearts. Hearts been flying on the screen for the last two or three minutes since, he been, since the record started playing. Uh, Vicky Love says it had a lot of potential. Um, Daryl Street said, Daryl Street says, good for a soundtrack too. Uh, who else? We got, um, uh, that's what else from last song. Okay. Hey folks, look here. Keep on come on, keep on coming in. Me and Greg are gonna kick it in. What you got to say, Greg? Uh, I think I need a little uh, work on the mix and the arrangement. Okay. You know. Okay. But overall, not a bad song. Not a bad song, no. Not a bad song. Now the brother ain't Jamaican. Oh. <laughs> He's not Jamaican. Okay? okay. He has two or three songs that are Jamaican flavor, but mm -hmm. the brother does not speak patois. He speaks plain old English, but he knows how to em em emulate the Jamaican style of doing the music, and it works for him. Right. Okay. Right. I, I, yeah, I just think these little arrangements needs to be tightened up in the mix. Right. The mix, the the uh, arpeggiator in the background is a little bit high. Yeah, a little bit high, and it becomes annoying because it's going on. Right. Like okay. But he, he got a, he got a good idea. See, right. and this is what I tell cats. I don't think uh, yeah, my boy says need to remix calf work. Craft work meets uh, R and B. I ain't mad at you, Doc. Agent <laughs> uh, Gregory, what's up, Gregory? Uh, he told me to tell you what's up, too, Doc. What's happening? He's over here. Uh, he hit me up earlier and said y'all got some history together. Yep. And Agent uh, says the intro is too long. Okay, I take that. Well, you know what? Now, what we get, we get now, we getting some professionals online. Mm -hmm. Some Atrin was once upon a time. Uh, uh, he, he was Tupac's manager, but he was also said the most underrated, said to be the most underrated a and R cat in the game. Okay. He had a lot of history. We all underrated. We're all underrated. That's why we're hanging out right now. We all underrated. Okay. Um so yeah, as as we do this, we realize that the artists that submit these songs are not professional. They have aspirations to be a professional artist and they're just giving us their demos so that we can evaluate their demos. Because if we were in a position to give them a record deal, we would use these demos. And because we have the professional foresight and the taste, we would recommend, okay, fine, I'm gonna give you a deal, but this is what we gotta do to it, okay? Well, right. I, what I used to consider myself as a fixer. A fixer, okay. Like somebody come in with, with your demo and I'll fix it for them. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Did you do Dream, LA Dream Team too? Uh, I, I, that's, that was my early stages. Okay. I was in the studio over Total Track doing uh, some sampling and stuff like that. Okay. So I, that was, I was in the learning stage. You know, I, I always get you, Courtney, and Tracy as like a, for some reason, as being together. Okay. I, I've always, it was more Courtney and Tracy together. I was kind of like the, the third wheel. Okay. And I fell off the third wheel. You got your own wheel. I got my own wheel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own wheel. Okay. Hey, what's up, Craig from Skate Land? I see my boy Craig, Craig the 
owner of Skateland, he's in the house that he's retired and moved way across the other side of the country. And he's doing his thing. He stopped in to say what's up to us here. And I'm glad to see everybody's chiming in and, and putting in their input. My boy Thomas says they need mentors. That's what we're here for, Doc. And this is the part that um, a lot of people don't understand. And I've had debates on this, day, on this, on this show before. Oh, it's garbage. No, no, no. You, you, have, you have to be able to see through the garbage. Okay. Exactly. Just because you don't have a great product, a great baseline, it's not a hit. It's, you know, most, most times, that's what producers come in at. Right. And if you're a good producer, you can you can find enough of a song that has enough to work with that you can go in there and make something happen with it. Okay, I'm gonna drop a song that uh, near and dear to my heart. Okay, I am. I'm not even gonna put it. I'm not gonna say nothing about this at all. I'm just gonna play it for y'all. And I know my boy is probably watching by now. And I'm gonna insert this song right quick. And this is something that uh, somebody brought to me last week. And I gave them some input, and they inputted it, <laughs> and they brought it back. This is what, they, this is what we got this week, y'all. Shout out to Lonzo. Oh, I thought you were about to play your own song. Godfather, West Coast, Hill Man, she know how we, bro. She know I got it going on. Ain't nothing but a G thing. If you wanna come ride, baby, yeah, come ride. Come ride, baby, ride. Yeah. And if you wanna come slide, baby, yeah, come slide. Slide with me, baby, slide with me. If you wanna make love, baby, turn off the lights. Off the lights, baby, turn them on. If you want to make love, baby, turn off the light, the light. Shorty be rolling my dick when I'm smoking. I feel like a young be floating. She told me the way that I'm making. I feel like I have a family wanna. I turn off the lights because it's bright and I'm getting it in right under the covers. You beautiful, thought you should know. I know you get it from your mother. Yeah, baby, I'm one of them guys that's flexing. You ain't got to pretend to kick it. You want it, I cop no price tag. Go ahead and cross that off the checklist. Yeah, I'll be rolling the forms and never get born. It's heavily expensive. Your shorty, you balling, you balling. You keeping me calling, you got my attention. I just pulled up in a brand new coupe, got him looking. Turn off the lights when I hit the building, have him shooking. She said, I keep my heart, but I don't want it took in. Baby, I'm amazing. Tell them other brothers push it. I got some tricks right up my sleeve that I thought you should know. And I know you miss me when I go get hundreds on the road. Go tell your best friend all about how we just hit on the flow. I keep a pit bag in my pockets. You know how that go. I'm a hell of a man, shout yeah. And you a hell of a woman, yeah. Girl, let's get into something, yeah. Let's get to grinding and bumping, yeah. I know you want to be mine, yeah. I won't waste your time, hey. Girl, you too damn fine, I'm in the whip, come slide, yeah. If you want to come ride, baby, yeah, come ride. Come ride, baby, ride, baby. All right, I ain't got nothing to say. I'm gonna have a, I got a biased opinion no matter what. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that to Greg. I'm gonna leave it to, to, to the crowd. Need more work. Brother, uh, you are too kind. Okay. <laughs> Need more work. I'm, I'm on the, that song, this song right here. Uh, Sean says, Greg's expression tells everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the track is slamming, but uh, it, he needs to, uh, like he's trying to do auto tune. Fix that auto tune. Okay. Okay. And then uh, his cadence is—he needs to tighten up his cadence. Okay. He's, hey. he's falling off and he's falling on. Okay, I hear that. I hear that. But that's why I wanted—I I wanted a second opinion because I'm biased to the track. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm biased to the. What can I tell you? I'm biased to the track. And um, he, he, he's a friend of mine's son, so uh -huh. I, I don't—I have to give him an honest opinion. Right. He still needs to tighten it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and the auto tune. Is kind of doing too much, or needs to be tightened up a little bit. Needs to be tightened up. Uh, he needs to work with it a little bit more to get it more 
sounding right. It's not sounding totally right. Now, how do you feel about people doing songs like that? Like like the uh, DJ Khaled take take an old song and just throw a, a new track on top of it and go get a check. I might get dragged, dragged through the internet if I really tell you how I feel about <laughs> it. You know, I don't understand my man. You know, he makes some great songs, but is he really an artist? Oh, man, you're my boy. <laughs> I've been saying that shit forever. <laughs> I'm going to go pay, pay to go see him in concert to see him. We're the best. You know, whatever he be saying. You know, I... He's more like a DJ, you know, so you're paying, you're paying, I'm not hating on him, I'm, I'm happy for him, but I'm being real. You know, I, I it, it, you know what, man, look here, being an old school, now, being an old school cat, okay, we have been, we've had to establish ourselves in the game, right. okay, and when I listen to my, when I listen to my man's, uh, his catalog, his catalog is basically one, somebody else's track, a rapper with a little something else on top of it. Right. And I ain't never heard him say it, bust a verse yet, have he? No, 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 that's what I'm saying. He ain't right? busted a verse yet. It's almost like Mark Manson. Was it Mark? Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark Manson. 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 Mark Manson's Manson. Manson. Manson, okay. Manson, yeah. he does, he, but he does music though, right? Yeah, he does music. Okay. And I, I, I just, sometimes I'm like, okay, I know I'm a little old. I'm, little, I'm a grown ass man, but did I miss something in the last 10 years? <laughs> Cause like I know some real DJ artists like Egypt and right, right. You know, they the ones should be getting that type of money, right? For, right. You know, cause they're real talented, right? But I, I, I do. I've always, I've always wondered about that. And again, depending on who you're talking to, they won't understand where we're coming from, right? Okay. They, oh man, you, that's how they do it nowadays. What did they do though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know. you bought you 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 bought a hit record to put a stamp on it, right? Okay, exactly. exactly. You put your stamp on the hit record. Oh shit! Yeah. Now in the in the room behind the camera, person you probably can't you can't see you 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 probably can't hear him right now either. But um, my boy unknown DJ has stepped into the room. Okay, an unknown DJ boy. If he wasn't an unknown DJ, he would be probably my permanent side man over here. But he don't like being on camera. But he got a lot to say about every goddamn thing. And usually it's obvious what the fuck I got to say, okay? And he over here shaking his big ass head right now, talking about we as we talking about DJ Khaled. And I'm not mad at Khaled. Get your money, man. But I just tell the big guy, how can I get my eyes up mine like exactly. that? Exactly. Okay? How can I get my checks? So how can I get Okay? Producers didn't play. They curated. They brought together the elements, Gamble and Huff, um, Philly, <coughs> the Philly Gang sound, the biggest sounds. They didn't play. They didn't, they weren't artists. They curated. They said, I'm going to put this musician with this musician, and this musician's going to play this, and I'm going to listen to the different songwriters, and they were producers. And the producer curated the whole thing and brought it together. Khaled is a curator. Um, this last effort of his, I'm unimpressed by it because you had a lot of ingredients. And I don't think it's his best work as a curator um, because you had scissors, you had, oh my God, you had access to everything. I, I think he could have done a better job. That's just my personal opinion. You know, that's not, I'm not hating at all. That's just a musical opinion. But I think we look at producers because producers cross the mark. They came like Dre was a, you know, somebody, okay, I'm programming beats and I'm doing that. And they called him a producer. Well, he was more than that. And then a Quick was more than a producer. And, you know, guys like myself, we were more, we were producers. We played, we you know, we created the music, so we were more. But you created the music. You just you didn't go to your crate and go, oh, I like this record right here. Rap on this motherfucker right here. Here's my stamp. You didn't do that, okay? You had to actually put some fingers on some shit. You you had to write some lyrics. You had to think about, oh, I'm gonna put this here, put this. No, the shit was already laid out. It's like somebody saying, I'm I'm Rembrandt. I'm gonna do is we put my name on this goddamn Mona Lisa shit, okay? The difference is back in the day, the producer chose. The song. The songwriter wrote the song, right? 
Right. So it wasn't up to the producer to create the music. It was like, I put this song with this guy. Okay, this is Luther. Luther didn't write. Luther sang like right. that. Right, sang his ass off. Sang his ass off. Okay. He had a songwriter and a producer. So had a songwriter and an arranger. And a producer and an arranger. Hell of a, hell of a players. Right. right. And the producer brought all that together. Okay. That's more what college is doing. But in it's one thing, I hear what you're saying. I got that. What I'm saying is, he, he don't go and grab musicians. He go to his record crate and grab the hot record. And y'all rap on top of this. This is just the shit right here. Call in Carlos Santana and put an extra solo on this motherfucker and, and get my sample on there. It's the best sample, music. That sample brought to his natural. That, that ain't sample. That's bootlegging. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's bootlegging. Cube sample. Cube sample dance. Okay? Cube sample dance. Uh, that uh, was the whole break, record, the but it, but it was, was a loop. But, but it was the loop. This motherfucker is playing the whole record, and he's rapping on top of the record. But if you if you rap, if your whole song is based on the chorus loop of the song, you pretty much have done the same thing. You just like looking back in, in a way where you're saying like because we took a piece here and a piece there and a piece there. It's not an as egregious thing, but the song you just sampled, that was just, I don't even call that sampling. He lifted the groove, held the record, and it worked. But it's no less, no, Kyle's not doing anything any more egregious than what Q did and what, um, um, who did tonight and tonight, um, our boy, um, you know. Oh, Candyman. Candyman. Okay, you know, that's same thing. Candyman did the same thing. That was a record. That was a loop, though. Boom, boom, boom. There was nothing else in the record except for a break. At, at least the motherfucker put a new break in there, OK? <laughs> Tony, Tony, t Tony A said, speak out loud, speak loud. So I got that, OK? Thank you, Tony A. I'll see you next Tuesday, man. I got an extra dap for you, too, god damn it. Because I'm trying to understand. All I want to understand is, look, man. Why is Shane Brown? Same thing. Uh, when you say Tony A, I'm thinking like the Tony Hold on, hold on. Okay. Death recreation. Now, this, what you're saying is one thing. I'm going to play a song from my girl Zia. Okay? It's, uh, you can't hear it though. God damn it. Um, cam it's a cameo song. And Greg going to hear it. In fact, you can, you can, you can tell on the side. I gave you my headphones. I heard it before. You can take my headphones. I'm going to play this song for you. It's, and what he did is different from what Khaled does. <laughs> but it's the same shit, but it's a little bit, do little bit doper. Y'all heard it last week, I'm gonna play it again. Wrong song. Wrong song. Treat me like 
Same or different? Greg, talk to me. Uh, I'm, I'm a cameo nut, so I love, I love the fact. You and me both. Okay. Uh, that, that's clear. Does DJ Khaled do the same thing? Not quite. Okay. Then that's the difference. Okay. Uh, hey. And that's the only difference. I'm not a hater. That, that song, that song I'm was. I'm not a hater. I'm a creator. <laughs> that song was chopped up. We re laid out and made for that song as opposed to just putting on the needle in this play. Exactly. It was the whole sample. What well, the whole song was a loop. And let me say, let me say uh, my opinion about the song with some polish, like the first verse. Okay, the way she went in the second verse and she kind of changed up and added a little something extra in there, mm -hmm. she should have done that on the first verse. If that was with some polish and a couple of changes, if that was Miss Chalet, if she sold, right. sold that song with Miss Chalet, that whole day, the same <laughs> way with a little bit, you know, more, you know, uh, fidelity. So yeah. what not, I'm, I'm not talking about changing music at all. I'm talking about a little more, you know, in vocal inflection and stuff like that, and just a little more attitude and sass. That's a hit record for Miss Chalet. Right, That's a, it was a key issue. Right, there you go. That's what I'm saying. It's a, it's, you know, but she has, she has a good idea. She right. needs a little bit more sass and some work on, on the vocal delivery. But the idea right. was good, and it's a head nod. So everybody nodded their head. Okay. Everybody nods their head to it. So can she do it? Yeah, she can go back in there and and, and continue to work on it. That she maybe she could benefit from a really good. Uh, vocal coach, because you need like, you know, you can't have too many ye yes men in the room. You need somebody that's going to go, all right, like, okay, maybe we can tune this a little bit, pitch it up, and work. Like Mary J wasn't the best singer. When Thank you. Thank right, you. Right. Mary right. J wasn't the best I've been chased out of places. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Reality's a reality. Get your ass whooped. <laughs> Minutes straight and dance and everything. I'm like, oh, oh the, the, thing, the thing about Mary, with people getting into Mary because the passion is there mm -hmm. and you, you believe what she's singing about. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she's gotten markedly better. She, right. she, better. Better. she was raw. I was not impressed with in the beginning. With, same thing with Faith Evans. She was a, she was a raw I was not. singer and she evolved as, as artists should. They should get better. This young lady right here, you know, for her idea and the ability to deliver it on the track, it just needs polish. It's working. You, you listen to some of my early stuff, boy, you be, you talk about that. <laughs> <Last, laughs> <last, last, laughs> <last, laughs> you listen to some of my early stuff. Right, right. Wait, look, I tell, every, I tell anybody, as an artist, an artist is like a mother giving birth. You have never gave birth to an ugly baby, okay? The mother never gives birth to an ugly baby. Now we, in our first, our first production, when we look back now, that shit was kind of whack. But back then, this is my shit. <laughs> yeah. This is my shit right here. It's life, okay? But you know, it wasn't like my mind was always, when I was doing it, I was like, this shit don't sound as good as opera. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I don't know. Yes, yes. Best I can give at this moment. Right. Right. But Arthur Baker is 
killing me right but now. The craft work is killing me right now. The Johnson crew, Quiet Light Twi- uh, Twenty, Quiet Light Twenty Two, Quiet Light Twenty Two, they killing me. I gotta, I, I need to up my 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 game and and still. They but just that, but the, okay, that's part of getting into the game. Okay, and because you got those references, you know where you went wrong, what you didn't have over here, what you didn't have over there, and how to improve it because you got better. You got better with time. So I'm gonna play another song, man. Um, this one right here is a song I got I got I got turned on to late yesterday last night. And uh this here is more of a jazz situation. Uh it's a remake uh from a a, a, a local artist, prominent local artist, and uh he sent it to me this morning and it was he was uh it was a very interesting, I had a very interesting meeting last night. And this song came out in this meeting. I'm going to play this whole song through the, for the whole thing. One is Thriller by Michael Jackson, but it's done with a saxophone player on the lead. Okay. I need your honest opinion because folks is uh, looking, looking for the same good things. Thank <laughs> you. 
right. That's Azar uh, Lawrence. I'll play it. Huh? I'll play it. You play it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why would you play it? It sounds good. I know. I can hear it on the wave right now. I can't, the fidelity, I can't really hear like really well. I don't know if it's MP3, but if it's but if the fidelity is there, um, it's a great song. I can hear it playing on, on the wave type stations in public places. Right That's now. why I have to have versatile ears on my show. Cause I got hip hop heads on my on this damn uh, feed over here, and they giving the song the blues. Okay, <laughs> they giving it the blues. Uh, uh, Eddie over here, he, he just threw up all his breakfast. Okay, um, Lonzo, are you getting back uh, kicked back over for torching my ears? Uh, this doc, uh, Thomas Woods, he got no. They're all just laughing. Uh, Cozy hell, the Cozy don't like nothing. <laughs> Eddie Gibbon don't like nothing, okay? He like Mikey, he don't like shit, okay? Um, so, but I, but I know Unknown is a jazz fan, okay? I, I'm glad he stepped in, because I am biased, because I know the guy who made the song. So I, my opinion has value, but it doesn't have as much value as independent, non-connected brothers like yourself. Greg said he would play it. See, this, Greg said he would play it, fantastic. But one of the artists, one of the, one of the uh, comments on the uh, feed here, made a point that people forgot about and what which, which was a series of records that I love Hidden Beach. Okay? Remember Hidden Beach? That's where Jill, that's where Jill Scott came from. The hit the Hidden Beach label. Hidden Beach over there with a uh, New York City uh Nick, right? The New York City Nick. Did you Yeah, he had they had a whole I, I still have some of their stuff I was supposed to I do too. Weeks ago, and it was all jazz. It was jazz. They take, take all the hip hop. Of, of hip -hop. Yeah. And but that song right there, what the hip hop heads are not hearing is okay. If you're a hip hop head, you might not listen to wave style music. Right. But that record right there, if they put it in rotation, it would be timeless. It would play for fifty years because Thriller is a timeless song exactly. itself. And it was a you know it was a a good cover like if David Sanborn covered it. The question would be, would Michael like it? That's, that's the question that people would, okay. would ask. Would Michael, do you think Michael would like it? And, you know, like how he was about his music. But as for a cover, it was a really nice cover. It had dynamics. It, uh, it was fun to listen to. And that's what you do. Jazz musicians cover pop tunes sometimes. And see, I had, to, made a, a life out of it. I had to play it to the end because the end is where, where, where his flavor comes in at, okay? If I just play just the beginning, like I do most of the song, the first two or three minutes, the, as, as, a, as a musician, okay, he cuts loose at the end. And that's the difference between musicians and producers, okay? Ain't no cutting loose at the end, because ain't nothing to cut loose. He just gonna do the same shit, he gonna rip it on out and, be, and wrap the something gun up. So I had to, like I said, as a, as a DJ, I had to give it full, let, let the full essence of the song be enjoyed by <laughs> listeners who appreciate something different, okay? And this is it's kind of, um, Eddie said it was torture, but he a hip hop fan, he don't like shit no way, so that ain't nothing new. Um, he wanna hear some cussing and he want, he, he want to get some, must my guy get shot fucking with him, okay? <laughs> he gotta kill a couple people for him to like, <laughs> if anybody died on the song, he ain't really messing with it, okay? I have a question for your listeners. What do they think of the new time they does anybody out there have any opinions on the new Kanye album? That's a, a direct question from unknown DJ who was off screen, but you probably can hear him. You should be able to hear him because he's might be pretty sensitive. He has a question to the audience. Does anybody have any opinion on the Kanye album? That's going to tell a whole lot whether you, whether you should be on my feet or not. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Depending on what you say, we'll, we'll put you on a different category on my feet, okay? Are you going to put the recycle bin? Oh, shit. Oh, hell no, Eddie! He said, I like Kanye's gospel album. It's dope. You get fucked up. I'm, cu I'm cutting your card. I'm cutting your card. No, 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 no. <laughs> He likes the Kanye album. So that tells me right there, he's on some special kind of shit. I love you to death. I think the word you're looking for is fanboy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sean Q says hip hop usually begins with jazz. 
intro, then it goes into a cipher rhythm. Uh, I get it, but yes, we are not ready for the jazz cut cover uh, for good old Michael J. Okay, baby, I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You're not a jazz fan. I ain't mad at you. And you, you're looking for hip hop. I got you. Kanye um, taking hip hop to another place. Daryl Strait. Girl, I'm gonna stop, stop taking your phone calls, man. He taking he taking it to another place, all right? Place I don't want to go. That shit going to hell in the hell. <laughs> but you know what? But again, I I do believe to a certain degree, a lot of people. We've had this conversation on this show before. A lot of people will accept boo boo from a name. You put you put a big enough name on some shit, it ain't shit no more. It's Shinola, okay? <laughs> you put a big enough name on some shit. It won't be shit. It'll be shot over. Okay? Huh? Yeah. Now I I didn't I didn't got I got numerous phone calls and numerous input about that song from professional cats. Like, man, I don't know what this boy's thinking about. But again, some people are like, oh man, he's a goddamn genius. I ain't never seen a genius in Kanye. I ain't I'm sorry. No, no, I won't say that. I I Kanye is is capable of fantastic works. If you look at, if you look at from a gospel standpoint, there is no Jesus walks on this album. You can Chick-fil-A all you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not Jesus walks. There is, um, you can like, you can love Kanye. And, and, and as a person, you know, I love Kanye. I don't love some of the, of his antics in, as of late. But as to judge the music uh, that's on this album, just from a personal standpoint, which is just all I can do as a um, as a producer and a musician, uh, that's not as accomplished as Kanye. But I can give you an objective opinion about that, and I can say that it that's that's not Kanye's finest. It's not up to Kanye's standard. It's not, I, I don't feel it's up to Kanye's standards. Okay. And those that love it, good. I'm glad you support Kanye and you should support artists that you love through what I consider a rough patch, but you shouldn't sit over there and be like, oh, it's the bomb, because then he might make something else like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey folks, we have a good time today. I got my boy Greedy Greg on the show and behind the camera, the official, the master of, of, of uh, incognito lifestyle, my man, Unknown DJ. You hear his voice, you, but you won't see his face. That motherfucker is stealth, okay? <laughs> he is stealth as they come. Let me pull up something else right quick here. Um, now, this song right here, I played it a couple times. And yeah, y'all will get mad at me. I don't give a damn. It's still my show. Uh, I'm playing this for Greedy Greg, Unknown just for the fact to see what I can get another opinion on the song right here. This is from another LA producer, very well, very established producer. My man, um, they call him the Muffler, okay? Muffler's still at it, and uh, he's given me a couple, he's given me a few songs to work with. Muffler, Muffler? Muffler, Muffler, that Muffler, okay? And uh, I'm gonna give you the headphones. I've heard this song a few times. I want your opinion, Doc. This is called uh, Love, Love in L.A. I met her on Sunset. Never seen a better body in a sunset. So baby, what's your name? Because it would be a shame if I wouldn't let you walk past. Oh, let's go for the whiskey. A couple of shots till we sip. Way. 
my boy uh muffler song a song for muffler not bad professional what i got from it not, from, not from, bad i can't really i know production was cool yeah i, I mean is it uh do i feel like it's a a, a single <coughs> it feels like a, a solid like tory lane's type of album cut it's a it's a good it's a good cut is it a is it a hit? Hit like something that's going to be in power rotation? I don't know. I would have to listen to it a couple more times. It's just personal opinion. It's well produced. It's got a nice little message. It's got a great hook. We fell in love in L.A. Um, I, I like it. I could be, I could hear it on a, I could hear it on the radio. Is it, it? It'd be a solid, like I said, a solid. Do you think these? I, I, my boy Cozy said it sounds dated. These sounds does it sound dated to you? No, I wouldn't use it. Huh? I, 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 he, he and I. He is. He is my number one uh, internet nemesis. Okay, when it comes <laughs> to music. Okay, he. He and I. That's my boy. I love him to death, and we fuck with each other every damn Tuesday. We go through the same shit. He don't like nothing, and I. I this song has gotten great reviews from a lot of people. And when he can't stand it, and I'm like, what's wrong with it? And that's why I want another professional opinion. I like it myself. I'm a Chicago stepper. I'm into stepping. That would be a great stepper song. If you understand how steppers move and how they, how, how they groove, that's a, a great grown-up song. That's okay. why he says daddy, because they, they don't understand. Okay. That this generation, they don't dance. They don't dance! <laughs> and you go to the club, everybody's in the... And they, they, they got a drink in their hand. Hey, that's my song. Right. That's my song, girl. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, Cozy ain't no kid, though. He's like 60, 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I got your ass. No, um, I'll tell you what. It's like the song itself, it's, it's got all the ingredients of a great song. If it was R. Kelly singing the song, ah. it, it, would be, it, it would be on the radio. R. Kelly right and Chris now. Brown. Yeah, you know, exactly. If it was R. Kelly, that's why I say it sounds like a really good, solid album cut. But this wave that these kids are on right now, everybody, everything's got to have like you know, hats. thirty second triplet hi hats and you know stuff of that nature. And that's why they say it, it's it's dated. Oh, like, okay, okay, how okay. you know it's not? How you know it's dated as opposed to being the next wave? You know, right. how would you how would you know? You you listen back like when Timberland comes out with something new, Timberland has a way of Timberland breaks sound. People still doing this whole people are still catching up to what Timberland did ten years ago. With Missy, right? You know, exactly. They still like are figuring out how he did that. But when the next wave comes, it's gonna be something totally different from what we are right now, because to be honest, this this music right now has got kind of stale. Woo, it's old kinda, bread. It's kind of stale. Like people are saying, you saying, it's only so much ass clapping, laid back, tell you. What I tell you? What I tell you? Um, <laughs> lean drinking, gun toting. How many niggas can you shoot in a record? You know, like just how much joy can you get out of um, murking the next black man and and nod your head to it, you know it's just it's gotten dated the way that you know the drug rap got dated, the way Jerry curls and Good Fred oil got dated, <laughs> the way, you know it's gotten dated, and we need something new in hip hop. That's why like cats like um, you know the 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 newer the 
Kendrick is was such a breath of fresh air to people that ha- were not already on his way from the college. Right, 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 right. You know, it's like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm rapping about something else and it's fly. And, you know, there's still hard rap, like the new Gangstar album that um, that um, Premier just, just, just dropped was just, wow, there's a couple of songs. My man, as a matter of fact, that guru did a song, I wish I could think of, I've only heard it once, I heard it on the air. And I wish I could think of the name of the song where he's, He's just complaining about, and I don't know when he recorded this because he's been passed for a while, but he was complaining about the state of hip hop before he passed, like how the the focus had been on all of this and we had lost the, the basis and the heart and the soul of what hip hop was. Like if you really love hip hop, you should, you know, this is not hip hop. A, the rappers ain't rapping and the singers ain't singing. They talking. Right. They talk. If they speak in English. If they speak in English, they, you know, they like they mumble right. rap. We got a song here called Murder. My boy, Daryl Straits, where you at, Doc? This is one of your songs you sent me today. Daryl, you ready? Uh, um, hey, man, Alaric said, uh, Rick Rock said, what's up? What's up, uh, old man? <laughs> uh, he says, uh, peace lines, oh, what's up, unknown? And, uh... Now, it didn't change his colors of it, but uh, but it's good in that regard. It's it's good for KGLH, not power. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it was it was a power song, okay? <laughs> it is a KGLH song. We're trying to get on KGLH right now. I just like the song. That's, that's just my personal opinion. Wrong song. Oh. I just want the world in my hands. Niggas okay. get it and get it in. We don't really know how it is. Murder ain't going up there for me and my friends. I'ma make sure we get a win. Big blocks looking like they ran from me. Niggas think they just joined this man. Don't fuck with the sand. Don't keep some place that they play for keep so. Bring it through the peak hole. Make you sure you slip it through the creek hole. Yeah. That's how they living, dog. Murder ain't sin, dog. Yeah. Murder ain't going up there. Fighting for so long with my demons. Hustle in the double, got a hustle while you mean it. Straight from the turf, hard ground, dirt demon. I didn't came a long way, but I still feel it. How to get it back and maintain our season. Had to lose touch with some niggas for some reasons. Ten toes down, fist up for any nigga. I don't talk God, pussy boy, I'm still lethal. Raised in the gutter, so I had to deal with evil. Tasting up my fears before I even turned legal. Had so many dreams, so I had to turn ego. Get up out the hood, fly high to the ceiling. Was a good guy, but I had to turn. We took it for granted and I'm stuck on the mission. But that takes bags, I don't really do feelings. I'ma do good, I'm already touch a million. Touch the first place, but I swear I never fall. Never in the place where they try to take my soul. Never have much, so I gotta eat more. Niggas been hitting, so I gotta stay go. The streets cold, but I swear I never fall. How to go from those to grind in the cold. Can't see it on the ego, so we do the most. I thought my ass, I was a kind of bankrupt. We don't really know how it is. Murder ain't going up there for me and my friends. I'ma make sure we get a win. Big blocks busting like they ran from niggas. See, they hit you in this man. Don't fuck with the sand. Don't see some place that they play for keep so. Bring it through the peak hole. Make you sure you slip it through the creek hole. Yeah. That's how they living, dog. All right, y'all. That was murder. <laughs> He got the right title. <laughs> right title. All right. All right. What, 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 I see Ch- Ch- Sean Q got the bubble head going on. To be honest, Lonzo, uh, you need to fix your sound to give it an artist a fair chance. Uh, sometimes, Doc, I can't fix it. It's, it like, sometimes it I can't fix it. It, it. it comes out of here great. And, and that's the best I can do with what they, they give me. Okay? Uh... Need better production and the younger, young, well, Rocket. Okay, you mm. need better production and the younger. Wow. Huh? Wow. Uh, that's my girl, Maxine. Maxine's in Mississippi, so she just probably got her shoes off right now. So <laughs> she might have stepped on the corners on some rocks or something. I'll tell her. Daryl Strait, uh, that's the brother who sent me the song. He's got an LOL on that right there. We get, we're getting some mixed opinions. Eddie don't like nothing as usual. Um, 
Maxine, like I said, that's my that's my country girl from Compton, by way of Compton. She think it's rockable. Uh, Sean Q, uh, yeah, I see you laughing. You're damn right, you laughing at my ass, okay? Uh, Sean Q got she got the bubble head, like what the fuck? So she don't know what's happening with her. And uh, right now we just having a good time, kicking it live on this show with all this music. This is what I get, okay? Now, if you got somebody that you think deserves to be on this show, please send them to me, okay? These are the people that have the heart and the music that send it to me every week. Here's my music, Lonzo, at gmail.com. It don't cost a dime to submit a song. We do this. I got my professional buddies here, and we just kicking it about this music. Because these guys, Greg said, he's a fixer, okay? He can take the ingredients and rebake the cake, okay? But you got to have enough eggs, enough flour, and enough sugar. You can't give him shit and try to make a cake out of this motherfucker, okay? Yeah. Well, see, that young man, he has a, I hear the message that he's trying to get out, I, I, and, he, and his lyrics are not bad. He's just in the beginning. He's got a lot to say, and it, it wasn't, the production was just terrible, okay? The production was terrible. But if, if that's what they sent, then they shouldn't send that. They shouldn't send that. No. You've been better off rapping to an acapella track because it, it, it was very hard to hear what he was saying, you know. But I was listening really hard. He's got he's got some good lyrics, and I can see him improving with his delivery. His his cadence wasn't that bad, you know. It's not bad as some stuff that I hear. So. Maybe, you know, I, I can see the young man having a future, but that, the music was just... Yeah, it was hard to decipher where it was. Yeah, to really, you know, less is more sometimes. Like, if you don't have, you know, you can do better than that. You can do better with that music. You, you, I don't know how that music got to sound like sound like. Rick Rock said, what's up with you, Beauty Greg? Hey, what's up, Rap? Uh, Sean said, I'm over the same rap and R&B trend, okay? Uh, Eddie Goodman said, told me to tell Greedy Greg is losing his musical credibility co-signing this garbage. Okay. <laughs> I didn't co-sign this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 my man Paul is trying to send me something. Here's my music. Here my here's my music. Here is my music. Lonzo at gmail.com. If we got time, Paul, but I will find you a slot sometime in the near future. Um, we got a, we got a bunch of songs in my catalog now, folks, and some of these songs are. Um, from the spoken word community, okay? And I had a couple of them that I kind of, kind of like, I get, get a second opinion on these puppies myself. You got a little, little disconnected here. Oh uh, no, I'm, just, I'm gonna give you the headphones. I'm gonna find my headphone mixer next week. We're gonna be able to, we ain't gonna do all this right here. And this is uh, something from the spoken word community that I kind of took a liking to. Y'all tell me what you think.
All right. That was uh, on and on. Good rhythm. From the spoken word community, y'all, look something different, man. Everything we do here is not the same thing over and over again. I'm, I'm a DJ, first and foremost. I'm a music lover, so I have a vast array of music that I, I that's in my, in, my, in my truck. If you roll with me, you might hear some of anything, but I, but I would like some professional opinions. Greedy Greg? It was cool. Okay. Unknown? I, cool. I can yeah, like to, to paraphrase some of the other people. So musically, it's a little dated. Okay. Musically, it's a little dated. I like the message, you know, but it's like, like, uh, Flavor Flav told Chuck E, it's like, you losing them, Chuck. You losing them. <laughs> 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 you gotta have, you gotta have something. If you want to speak to somebody and get through to them, you gotta get, have something that make their heads bob. If you, it, it depends on who your target audience is. If you, you know, doing something, because people that are our age, yeah, you might be able to slash that pie, but if you want to talk to, you know, 25 and under, you need to have their head bobbing. And I, I would say nobody did that better than Public Enemy. Now you know what? Chuck, Chuck D and Clay, Clay and Chuck, Chuck preached like nationalism and had people just dancing out of their mind and they pumped it into their head. What? He didn't, he, they didn't even know. It was just like, Coming into a million nothing. Now, you know what? That's a very good point, Doc. That's an excellent point. And being, you taking that point right there and, and um, going back to today's music, how can you get a message across to young, the youth of today if the music that they like ain't really danceable? It's not even, it's not even, it's not relatable. It's like, Good for smoking weed. You know, it's it's weed smoking. Come on, Greg, help me out. Shit, come on, man. You bet. I mean, you know, he's what he said is absolutely true. You know, we went from Public Enemy to NWA and everything in between, all while dancing. All those 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 eras was fueled by dance music. In fact, let's go back go back even further. Prince had niggas doing wearing jerry curls and draws. <laughs> Prince had niggas wearing jerry curls and draws and with, with trench coats to Eve at the dark. Nigga right. out there, Eve at the dark, trench coat and compared to Dunton Dunn's on. How much he looked with a jerry curl, fresh jerry curl, like Nike Prince. They had cats wearing baggy pants and uh, shirts and ties, thinking it was more state, all because they gave them something to groove to. Right. Okay. We, we listened to a vast variety of music growing up. Okay. Now it just seems like it's just one little little corner. Everything sounds the same. Mm. Unknown said it once before. He says, you know what? Back in the day, we had a bar full of shit. We had Hennessy, water, <laughs> milk. <laughs> These things are all Hennessy right now, okay? It's all Hennessy. And, you know, and Hennessy ain't bad, but you can't live on Hennessy alone. At least with a headache. You gotta have a water. You gotta have some water, okay? Like one of the, uh, a rapper that I worked for, worked with Yomo, um, you know, Dezo Dash. Right. Dezo had this incredible flow. People heard it and they said, man, you sound like Rock Kim, right? And he didn't sound like Rock Kim, but there was enough of a twinge in it where people like somebody off the West Coast that, they, that could flow and deliver like that, the only thing that would come to people's mind was rock. Okay. There wasn't nobody else doing it like that. But the point I'm making is, if you sounded like somebody else when we was coming up, oh, you could, you got right. zero. Right. You, you got, but you didn't get zero respect. You got disrespect. You got ran out the place. You right. couldn't sound like, like, Tone Loke sounded like no one. No one. Right. No one. No one before, no one, no one sounded since. like, no one sounded like Ice. No one sounded like um, N.W.A. No one sounded like Ice Cube. Um, Compton's Most Wanted didn't sound like N.W.A. They both right. had three admissions, but they sound, their music was nothing similar. But right. people loved them both. Now, it, it's kind of like, I kind of blame the South for that. The sound, I can't blame y'all. Don't start. Don't start. You don't forget. <laughs> That's people going to put the tank up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. First, he goes right at t- he, he goes right at tank up your ass yeah. talking that shit. Yeah, he, 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 he did some real things out of the South. But it seems like 
the, that was the, a turning point. Right. The, the, like, even his artists didn't like. Mystical didn't sound like. I love you know, Mystical, but that's one of like, my favorite you know, artists on this label. You know, like, those, his artists didn't sound alike. Mystical. But people started sounding like them. Mystical. No one sounded like the ghetto boys. You right. know, you didn't sound like Starface or sound like Woody P. But then people started emulating, and we've gotten to a point where, man, I listen to a song, I'm like, who is that? Because the music sounds the same, and, and they got the same auto tune. Seem like I don't recognize one one from the other because, you know, it's like, okay, this is the wave right now, let's jump on. Right. I got another one I got from a uh, boy named Philosophy. Some old school shit right there. What's that? Like, here's my music, Lonzo. Here is my music. All right, y'all. That was uh, Unknown again. I don't, he, ain't no name on the track, but I like the track. Unknown, what you got to say about that one, man? You know what, man? I mean, anything that makes make me feel, uh, from the beginning, I was like, oh, this feel like some early DJ Quick production. The production was like, like, and I don't mean the production, I mean the, the flow, the music. The music sounds like with a, with a great mix, it's, the music is nice, real nice. You know, it's got a nice little flow. It's got a good little head nod, but the subject matter of the rap, I feel like the track, I, I would give the track like a, a seven if it was remixed and, you know, sonically good. Like, you ain't even got to change because what they were, the little chant in the background, I couldn't hear that. I couldn't understand what they were saying. But musically, it was like, bomb. Uh, you know, musically, but it just needs to be mixed again so that the potential of the track that could come there, the notes are there. You know, just the sound needs to be worked on, but the the, the subject, it was really wordy. You know, I felt like it was really wordy, like you got a, you got a, you got a hit track mm -hmm. that people will nod their head to, but maybe you need to put some like 
head nod and music on there, your subject matter needs to be something like, you know, like where it, it, it kind of begged for a call and response type oh, okay. of spot. Like, okay. like what, what we talk about, so and so and so and so, or something like, give me, bring me in. It was a lot of words and, you know. Artists doing too much. Right. The subject, the subject seems like it was. The, the delivery of the subject matter needs to be condensed uh, uh, somehow. It's just a, a lot to me. It was just a lot of words. Yeah, it was working. It wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. The, the artist wasn't bad. His, his skills are not bad, you know. And his his delivery was not bad at all. It's just like you got this like almost gangster flow, um, gin and juicy kind of track, and it's like well, uh, maybe you should give me a little, you know, gin and juicy <laughs> kind of flow, you know. Right. Great, what you think about that one? Uh, like the mix, because uh, some parts of it was too low. Like, like I don't know, say like you couldn't hear what he was saying in the, uh, in the hook. Okay. Yeah, it, it was other other than that. The track was cool. The, the subject matter was all right. The rhyme, like it was too wordy too. Okay. Now we getting we getting I'm getting some I'm getting opinions in your face from professionals who do this. They are professional song producers and fixers, okay? So, like I said before, if you got enough elements, if you got, I think if a song's about a seven, a good producer, a good fixer can take it to a nine or a 10. You gotta have at least about a six or a seven just to give somebody, you gotta have the, the basic track, the basic flow with a good hook, and that'll get you a potential. What's your what's your rating on it? What's what's? Um, seven, seven, seven. You give me a seven, I can fix it. You can fix it. What about you, one though? I, I would say if we're talking about that particular song, I would say you need a, a lyric rewrite. You need a different subject matter. You okay. Know, or uh, not. I'm I'm not saying those lyrics are bad. I'm just saying that man, you got something right there that might, you know, like. Uh, it just didn't uh, fit the track. You know, if I was, I, I, I think of like because of the uh, inflection of the music, the first thing popped in my mind was quick, and I'm thinking like, okay, you should be talking about something like tonight, okay. tonight, uh, you know, and there's something somebody there's a commonality of what you know experience that people had or something like that because it's a head bobbing kind of track, you know, you know maybe you should consider, um, you know. You know, on that particular song, you know, yeah, because sometimes you can't deliver you the your message gets uh, the message needs to match the track sometimes, you know. That's just my that, that, that helps a whole lot. Did that track that you see me that song you read? Yeah, I'm looking for it now. Uh, don't see it just yet. Let's play something from uh. From this artist, that's a radio commercial. That ain't gonna work. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm waiting for another track to come through, y'all. I'm gonna play a song that we got last weekend from another good artist, a boy, uh, uh, Killer Snake or Snack. No. Killer Hollywood. <laughs> Wrong song. Wrong song. Back up. Back up. That's the same video from last week. We don't want that one. My song. song. <laughs> Something I must say It's important that you know That I plan to spend all of my day And I vow to give you my heart I place it with a ring So you can enjoy this love And all the fine 
Wedding song that's gonna replace uh, uh, uh Ribbon in the Sky. Tell me what you think. <laughs> okay. In my opinion, that's the shit. Okay, you don't need nothing but to go into a studio and re record that shit sonically better. I wouldn't change the notes, I might do some sweetening and stuff to it, but that's one of them situations where I said less is more. It's simple. The kid can sing. They, the harmonies were uh, were quite decent, and the subject matter was understandable. I that's a that's a to me that's a great song. It's a I mean a song you can hum a good song and people will like it. You don't need a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff. And it was simple. I think people would like it. I think it's a great song. That's 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 my opinion. I mean you again. The, the production value could be better. You could go in a studio and just take whatever they got, just press the button on whatever they got and put Mr. Greg behind the wheel and, <laughs> and, and, and the boards and it would, it would come to life. Different. Right, it would come to life. And you might add a little something here and some chorus and this, that, and the other, but that, that felt like to me. Yeah, that, that, that would felt right. It, it just need a little piece, a little sprinkle. Okay. That's what I said, okay? But again, the, the, the gallery says something different, okay? Uh, where's the, where is the, 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 where is the wow at, okay? <laughs> uh, it's so, because yeah, this generation right here, they, they suffer from lack of love. When you start talking about love on the These niggas is rapists. They right. <laughs> 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 they Give me the money. <laughs> Sweat and Teddy Kendrick. Niggas is wack. Give them a bunch. Soft ass niggas. Tip ass niggas. Hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you, hip hop head ass brothers out there. Women buy records. Okay. Right. Women stream. Women pay to go to concerts. Women. Women. If this, if this kid right here is a good looking guy and he get up on stage and start confess, confessing a feeling like that. The women will like him. He's got a good. That's why you got a few singers out here that are doing well. Y'all sitting over there going, "Well, give me the pussy, give me the pussy, give me the pussy, <laughs> give me the pussy, give me the pussy, give me the pussy." Hey, go on, we give me the pussy. Catch some cases and shit. Got some drugs. <laughs> well, when's the last time you heard like a slow song on a 
92 or power. Man, you ain't gonna hear what. Or, or you go to the club, you know, when I DJ. When they break it down, they, 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 they would break it down at the big nap like maybe once a night. They, they, if you break it down right now, people start leaving. <laughs> right. They bump you over with it. You know, <laughs> they, they, on the way home, they listen to it. They, they listen to that. If you go, are you gonna be? Are you gonna go home and bone your girl to straight out of town? Bone your girl. Bone your girl. Fuck the police. Right. Youngster, when you when you're at home with your with your wife, with your with your girlfriend, what do you make it love to? Are y'all, what do you put on? Lil Wayne, uh, uh, Mr. Officer. <laughs> <laughs> What's their love making song? That's a good question. Yeah, what is a love making song out there for all my all my uh, new music webinar critics critics out there? We got critics up the ass. Hey, I got thumbs down. Where is it? Where is this? Where is that? Yeah, it's a KJLA song. We know that it's a grown folk song. The world don't live on what that. Y'all, when the, you go home and you turn down the lights and you want to get you want to get like sexy with the, whoever it is. What are you? What what's playing in the back, buddy? Somebody, I, I need names. I need artist names, <laughs> song names. What are you playing? Uh, bitch, better have my money. <laughs> 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 well, to me, this this generation, their music is mindless. It, it, it doesn't leave you with anything. They got that. What you got? No, y'all ain't having no sex, huh? Um, <laughs> We uh we can't be on the edge. We have to tell it like it is. Okay. <laughs> That's why you niggas catching cases. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 nobody answered yet. Hey, nobody said nothing. Well, you know, because you know why? Because you playing keeps wet. You playing some old school. That's what you playing. That's why you don't want to answer. We we live in a we live in a society now that everybody wants to be a goddamn gangster. Okay, mm -hmm. at all times. Okay, and think about this. Think about this. Only gangster rapper that ever did any kind of slow song for women was Tupac. N.W.A. and Quick. I love Quick. I can't recall Quick doing a slow. And now he did some nice. He got some beautiful jazz tracks that yeah, he's done. Definitely. Okay, cha cha. He he's done oh, that. Man, okay, yeah. he he's done that. But I've never heard him do a uh, hey. Let's make love without getting some pussy. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> type of song, okay? He did a couple, uh, but I can't think of the top okay. of my head right Dre now. Dre ain't never did a song for a woman, okay? <laughs> he never did a song for the for that would get for the female. Still hear LL, I need love. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. All right, and, and that's the difference, okay? And I think in, of, of Cube ain't never did a song for a woman. Every every woman song he ever did, women was a bitch, okay? Bitch in the house, okay? <laughs> Fuck it, okay? But I can't recall Cube. I can't, the the the, the slow song I ever seen Cube, I remember, call, remember Cube doing was uh today was a good day. Okay, that's one thing I remember him doing that might have been remotely considered a, a cha cha or something like that. But everything else is kind of hardcore. Think about it. A lot of these rappers are like really monolithic right now. It would be like. We gone are the days of Tribe Called Quest, where you would have a a plethora of like one song would not sound like the other song. You you'd have Benita Applebaum, and then you would have you know some type of song where you just bouncing your head to it's a, it's a whole the whole like the whole record is that that's why these songs have got to be like two minutes because. You know, that's why everybody doing two minute and 20 second songs now. Like, no, no, nigga, like, fuck. So, so that's like, you know, Takashi, and they just, you know, you don't need to hear that hook again. You can hear it like 60 times in a record. Like, the point of the songs, that's why the songs have got shorter because the substance has gotten thinner, you know, and it's better to hear them short. You're like, I got that point across next, you know. Look, we're looking to see profit worldwide, the world is going global. Okay, I understand that, but shit, the world is going global. But also because so many, it's, it's such a, such a, a vacuum. When you got guys like Ozzy Brothers who's 70, 77 years old, is still packing out a, a, a hall. I went to a concert Saturday, Sunday, Friday, with the cop with the Ozzy Brothers. Ron Ising and his brother and some dancers had the joint 
field to the Raptors, and everybody was partying the whole time. And guys brought their girls because they know they they was after they left, it was gonna be on and popping. Well, you know what? The whole ASAP crew, they a little different. Okay. J. Cole is a little different. His crew, they they like worldwide. But ASAP, they not all on that on one thing. You gotta have some. I'm sorry, folks. You gotta have some depth if you want to have some longevity because. 80% of these rappers that was popping last year will not are not popping this year, and the ones that's popping this year, eh, they might not be around two years from now. Greg asked me a question before he went on the air. We were talking. He asked me what was the hot artist and song last year, and I couldn't tell you. And I ran the club last year. I couldn't tell you last summer what the hot song was. I played, <laughs> I remember when uh when when um Shake it like a bull, shake it like a bull, a bulldog, bull nose, Sage the Gemini. Mm -hmm. When that song came out, everybody was on my ass. I was still DJing pretty regular at the club. They was on my ass to play that song. Uh, shake it like a, a red nose, shake it like a red, whatever it was, red nose. Red nose. Yeah. I played that song for about, about three weeks straight. I went to play it again. After that, and folks were like, "Why are you playing that?" That's old. <laughs> <laughs> the cycle has gotten short. They was on my ass on the first. By the twenty third, that man, we just on that big and fun. Well, you know like what? Because artists, our artists have recognized that the cycle is so fast right now. You had artists like Takashi who have put out an uh, album every six months. You mm -hmm. know, just to, to 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 keep on the cycle to have new music out, and they always dropping little tidbits. It's been you know that like if you don't put out if you don't put out a record for a long long time like Lauren Hill could do that but Lauren Hill is Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill and say uh, Sade. That's about it. Sade can come back fifteen years. <laughs> if, if, a, if, a, if a text go out right now, say Sade gonna be at the at the in, in Hollywood at the Bowl tomorrow at seven p.m. It'll sell out before the night's over. That's true. I got another song right because it's called it's called Salty. Salty. All right, y'all. I can't hear it. Oh, you know. Girl, when I put my hands on your body, Pinky promise me you won't run into nobody else. Don't you run and tell nobody, baby. Girl, when I put my hands on your body, Pinky promised me you won't run and tell nobody else. And don't you run and tell nobody, baby. Is it me or is it he? Why you gotta be so salty? Why you into me? If you feeling me, you ain't gotta be so salty. Y'all, that was salty. Now, unknown missed that one right there. That was uh, that he missed that one right. There. That was a good song. That was um, 
a, a song of today's generation. It has a catchy look to it. Uh, the beat is there. I didn't hear them 30, them 30 second hi hats that I can't stand. <laughs> I'm so tired of them some bitches right there. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, it had, the, it, it actually was a cha cha. Okay. I, you, I, I can see you. Cha cha. It had, a, the beat was, had enough tempo to it that you could actually do something to it besides bob your head and smoke weed. <laughs> Unknown missed that one right there, Doc. Uh, uh, Eddie, 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 don't like nothing Goodman says. It's uh, struggling, but it's a, it's struggling, but it's good. It's cool. Okay. It's struggling. Uh, okay, I got a little something. Okay. Eddie, Girls huh? say it's okay. Sound like sound like radio play. Can uh, I can I can room I can work with that. I'm, he said I can room with that, but I don't, I'm gonna say work. Okay, I'm gonna say work. He says I I can room with that. I don't know what that means. <laughs> run. run with that. Maybe yeah. run with that. Okay. Um, was a song I said you guys you, you call this mics. I don't like these. My boy got me wearing these damn things. My fat ass chin be cutting it off. <laughs> That's some bullshit. Okay. <laughs> your chin be cutting your shit off, okay? <laughs> um that was a good song, right? And the wrong with this it's the day that that, uh, that was a power one oh six song. That was a a, a ninety two point uh, the, but the beat now the fuck is called because that's a propel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's why my fat ass chin. <laughs> yeah, I should I should have changed my shirt. But um that's a good song, Doc. Who, who's the artist? Just a little kid from Fresno. Okay. Y V. Okay. Man. Y V baby. I'm I, I ran across a young lady back in March. They had a song. I did a seminar for Sacramento. I'm gonna see if I can get it get it. Bring that song next week. Her song, when she played it, it was like hearing Evelyn Champagne King. This motherfucker was fire. Everybody, Jake, everybody, Cornell West, the whole whole panel jumped up and started dancing. <laughs> we hadn't heard a song like this for so long. And I was coaching her for a while and her grandmother got sick. So I hadn't talked to her. I'm gonna find that song next week. I'm gonna find her and give her a call so I can get a copy of that song to play on this show. And just to see the different contrast that of music. And I think that's the one thing that the younger generation is, mi is missing. They get stuck on one type of groove, and they don't want to expand to anything else. You know, broaden and, your horizon. And uh, unfortunately for us, we were brought up on everything. Right. So as a DJ, as a DJ, as a DJ, you can't play one style of music all night long. You gonna get run about the goddamn club. But the new DJs, they don't. You know, I've had guys come to the club tell me, "Hey man, it's a club banger," and they put it on. Do, do, do. Fuck is that banging? <laughs> but you know that's what they call club bangers. It just it just have a whole different definition of what is a club song. Well, you know what? Another thing, this this new generation of musicians uh, and producers, I feel like a lot of the sampling and technology have made music making accessible. But there's a difference. I like like we got a friend named Roscoe. You put a, a hammer in Roscoe's hand, Roscoe will build you a house. You put a hammer in my hand, and you gonna need a bandage. Probably. <laughs> 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 uh, there's a big. I, I I feel like a lot of these kids have not taken the time or the undertaken the educational steps to learn their craft to become engineers decent engineers because when we were coming up I, I had to do it all or pay somebody forty dollars right. an hour and when I did pay somebody forty dollars an hour I had to absorb like a sponge so that the next you time this I didn't have, you know I didn't have to pay him as much but to produce the sound sonically, it's, it's like the, the quality of the music isn't there. Yes, you have the technology, but you can sample somebody's sounds, but that doesn't make it sound like that sounds sounded really good because there was room in the, in the space for that kick drum sonically. You put that kick drum with a different snare 
and a different hi-hat and a different crash, it don't sound right. So there is like, if you want to be a producer, you know, maybe you need to go to school to learn school. your crap. School. That you you need to learn your crap. That and that means that you are able to. What? That that means that you are sonically able to curate really good music. That doesn't mean you can write a good song. There's songwriters out here that can come and sit at a piano and sing. John Legend can sing you a song with no drum, no hi hat, no accompaniment, and sit down at the piano and sing you a hit song that he wrote. And it is a hit because he's playing a little bass in his hand and a little melody on there, and you'll leave out the room singing that. You that said school. I'm, I'm going to sound like homegirl from the water boy. School, school, school is <laughs> for fools, okay? I, you I can think. learn on YouTube. On YouTube, that's true too. You man. can learn. You don't have to go to school. You're, there's whole disciplines on YouTube, but there is no, really no substitute for good, like, good monitors, and you develop good ears. You don't, good ears are like, you know, we all, as I'm sure Greg has had the experience of when he first started out, you at home and you swear your your cut is staying on these speakers that you got. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You go out and cut like, oh, that what record. happened? Oh, oh my God. Out that record. I was at the, uh, me and the cat named Gerald Davis, we did a record. It was, um, it was actually, it was Clientel 2030. And we just, oh man, it sounds great. And we went to the studio. And I wasn't engineering my own stuff at that time because I, I was still in engineering school over at Long Beach City College and taking introductions to um, electronic music and recording techniques. I wasn't skilled enough to do my own thing. And my boy, Terrence uh, Troy, was DJing at the Paradise 24, for those of y'all that's old. Oh, <laughs> y'all don't know nothing about that. But uh, that was, back when Los Angeles had nightclubs, that was insane. It was just parking lot pimping to know he's oh, he extraordinary. I, 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 like Eddie Murphy would fall through. I, yeah, our city over it was just a hot Jetta. It was hot. It was it was huge and it was hot. And my man put on our record, and I'm like, "What?" We stand in the middle of the place, and I'm like, "Damn, where is that man?" It sounded like you got dust on your shoes. Like, what's wrong? Uh. And and we was on one side of the club. As we started walking towards the DJ booth, the sound got brighter and brighter. And I'm like, what the heck? And it occurred to me, this dumbass rock and roll engineer we had was playing the hi-hat on him. <laughs> right? So all of the, all of the sizzle of the, I'm like, and it's master now. It's kind of like, I got to go. We didn't spend money, right? We didn't spend <laughs> so. I mean, it's that kind of thing, and so not having the skill at the time to recognize that this dumbass didn't put my hat in the center, but slightly off to the left a little bit where it belongs, so it would play here in the club. I didn't have that, and this this is like knowledge, sonic knowledge that some of you producers and some of you artists need to play. Apart because that I am everything. It, it's hard to be everything. Yep. It's That's very true. hard. That's very and true. and they be so there's such a rush to get it out. They don't right. really give it a chance to you to hear it. You know, like the first time I put a record out and rush it to the club. And I'm like, oh man, it's a big hole in my my record. <laughs> Where's the rest of my record? It's no mid range. For the time, hurry up. Uh, but anyway, he was working over at Universal, so they would be in on his mixes. So the worst feeling in the artist as an artist in the world is for you to go ahead and have your music and finally make it to the club 
And they put, like, you're coming out of, like, an Egyptian level record, and the record will mix, or, or any record, and then sonically, the bottom just drops out. It's like, <laughs> the, it's like then his shit is boom, 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 boom. And then yours comes on, it's like, <laughs> and then the record that follows it is like boom, boom, boom. and you like like Greg said, there's a hole that we realize that there's a hole and it's it's not because of the content of the music it's because your engineering skills or your engineer was not as good as Hank was well, alright so, folks with, with that right there we gotta wrap this show up Greg, Greg what you got going on man tell them one more time um uh, Working on a biopic for DJ Quick and also working on a country and western Christmas movie. And you know what? What? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Before you go there, we're going to go there off, off air. On uh, January 18th, I'm doing the uh, Unsung Hero for West Coast Awards. I'm looking to give DJ Quick an award. Okay. I'm trying to lock his ass down, come through and pick it up if he can. Okay. All right. I'm I'm doing that. I'm because Quick is Quick has been one of them cats that has been underrated in Compton for years. Okay, to, and I, I it ain't no secret he's my favorite. I know Dre. I raised Dre, so Quick <laughs> is my favorite. Okay, Quick is Quick is my favorite because I, I, the reason why I like Quick is because Quick has an original sound that's all Quicks. Okay, you can if he give it to Tony Tony Tony, if he give it to the Barge boy, you know that was a Quick song. Okay, that's a Quick track. Okay, and that's the difference. The quicks, all tricks, all quicks tracks to me are danceable tracks. You can be talking about kicking eight's ass, and he <laughs> motherfucking make you dance. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he can be talking about whipping the nigga's ass, and he gonna make you party. Oh, yeah. It's all love. Uh, that 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 rivalry propels us both to even. I ain't, shit, I ain't mad. But hey, hey, hey. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, he, quick is not only a great producer, he's a great storyteller. Yeah. Okay. He's a great t- storyteller, and I can respect him as an artist and as a producer for those two talents. Okay. And I want to acknowledge him for that. On January 18th at the Dollar High Center in Compton, uh, I'm working with his, some of his friends to make it happen. But it's a series of people we're giving awards to that day, and he's one of the main people. So I need to make that connection. Make sure he can you somebody can pick that award up for him. Okay. All right. In the meantime, in the background, folks, you hear my boy DJ Unknown. He's back in the back. You ain't gonna see his face. He might as well just be a head on a goddamn stick, okay? <laughs> he ain't going to show his face on, on camera, but that's all right. He always has a whole lot to say. Trust me, got a whole lot to say. Been saying this shit for 40 fucking years, okay? And sometimes, most of the time, we're on the opposite side of the spectrum. But today, we kind of agreed on some shit. That's a good day. In the meantime, for everybody on my feed, uh, Daryl Strait, Eddie Goodman, Sean Q, uh, Kirk, um, Rick Rock, everybody in the, the chime in today. What's up, um, Trinisha, uh, Trinisha? Um, we're out of here, baby. We're out of here. We'll be back next Tuesday at 7 o'clock with some brand new songs and a brand new guest. In the meantime, thanks everybody for watching the show. I'll see y'all next week, God willing. Peace. I'm out of here, y'all. Bam. That's it. Yeah. Turn these mics off.